Sweetwater Commissioners, Mayor Board, as uh, it's February 1st. We will have prayer. It'll be the Lord's Prayer, and then followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. And Craig, if you don't mind, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Let's all stand the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever.
Hopefully that'll make the process go quicker, but they will still make us go through the right-of-way phase. It should just be a waiver. We should just have to send the letter in. The engineers say it's just asphalt on top of existing right-of-way, and they should just give us the approval, which is probably about a six-week process. But I think that we'll be able to pay by the summer. And just for the public, that's um, surface transportation funds. So when you go to the gas pump and pump and pay a gas tax, it's like 36 cents per gallon. Um, that's the funds that's being used for that paving project. Um, drug enforcement fund, nothing significant there. We did have a deposit from some drug seizures from Clark and Master. Um, tourism fund, there's no expenditures in the tourism fund. So the only thing showing is the revenue from hotel motel tax that month. In the home grant, we had three expenditures totaling around $1,500. Again, that grant is to rehab five homes or eight homes on uh, Blair Avenue, and it's 100% grant, so the city is reimbursed 100% for that. Any questions? Okay, thank you, Jessica. Your motion to accept these distributions. Oh, no. Very good. Been made, the motion has been made a second. All in favor, aye. Aye. All the likewise, the motion does carry. Next on the agenda, one of our friends of Sweetwater, Craig, and Callie. Where is Callie, Craig? She's making. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they, uh, they have helped us down through the years with 5Ks and things like that, so I'm going to turn the floor over to you. Craig, I think you've got a request. I, do. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know what the protocol is. I'll stand here if that's okay. So what we're requesting is is permission to connect, conduct a 5K run walk on September 11th of this year. This will be the 20-year anniversary of September 11th, and we need, as a town, I feel like we should commemorate that in some way. Because we live here, we want to do it here, but we want it to be a county-wide thing. That's why we have called it the Hero Run, and we are going to have a symbol, not a Superman symbol, but a symbol that looks like uh, the symbol that's on your paper there. I apologize for you that don't have a copy, but it is, it is the Pentagon as well as the towers. It is a 9-11 memorial symbol. So we will do that, and we'll have that on all of the shirts. We decided this year that um, we really wanted to call it the Hero Run because those folks are heroes, the 71 officers, 343 firefighters, and numerous other folks that perished that day. And in this time, um, we feel like Hero fits better because we want to have on each shirt, I'm running for, and you can pick one of the heroes of 9-11, or you can pick someone that's a nurse, or that maybe rides in 431 our ambulance that's here in Monroe County. And we want you to be able to write that on there. We'll have a station set up at the race for you to do that. You can run for Eddie if you want to. That'd be great, because he is a hero. He's out there on the front lines. So we want to be able to have that for folks. We're going to have a touch of truck, and that touch of truck will be police cars, um, fire apparatus. We are hoping to, actually, we've got a crazy goal. Uh, there are 26 agencies in Monroe County, the emergency services. A lot of those are fire departments, volunteer fire departments across the county. The majority of them are that, but you've also got 911, you've got the rescue squad, you've got Sweetwater Police Department, you've got Sheriff's Department, you've got all the municipal fire and police departments. So we are hoping to raise enough money through this race, through sponsorship as well as entries, to get $500 to each emergency service. So that's what we're asking for, is a chance to honor the memory of a day that we'll never forget. And for some of these kids, they never experienced it. But we hope to have a memorial wall, or we will have a memorial wall out there with pictures, as well as the names of those involved in that tragic day. But we want people to come and experience that. We'll have a speaker, we'll have some different things. Uh, I've got a piece of the Twin Towers that will be there. And we want people to come and just enjoy the run, walk, remember those folks, and remember our heroes. So that's what we're asking for permission for. And if you've got any questions, I'll let them answer. Thank you, Craig. Any questions? I got one. Where do you propose to do your run at? We propose to do it on Main Street. 
which we do understand uh, that would be shutting Main Street for about an hour. We've worked with Eddie uh, and John in the past on these things, and we'll have a rolling open. So what we'll do is we'll start at the gazebo, we'll run towards uh, Rural King, and then uh, from there we'll run back all the way to 322. And what we do is once we pass um, the downtown mark, we'll open those streets back up. Once they get past, uh, I can't remember the cross street there, the post office will open that back up. So it does take about an hour of closed time, but uh, we've worked with them in the past. We'll also use some of the emergency services that are on site that day to help with traffic. So it, it will be a little output for the city, uh, but, we'll, but I will work with Eddie and Don on that. Good, thank you. No problem. Are you going to have like a registration fee, Craig? like we did in the 4th of July, we will. 25 or whatever. Yeah, $25 is probably what we're looking at. We do not have anything live yet because I needed your permission first. But we will have, our plan is to have the website live by the end of this month. And when the, the half marathon marathon is here, we plan on handing each of those a flyer about the event to get them to come back. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. I hear a motion to approve this request. Make a motion for approval. Second. Right. Any more discussion? Okay, if not, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, likewise. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Thanks Chris. There is no old business under new business. We have Tanya Rich here, our library director, to provide a annual library report. See, unfortunately, it's a recap for 2020. <laughs> um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, libraries across the world were forced to scale back services and staffed hours. Some libraries closed at the beginning of the pandemic and remain closed even today. Most libraries, however, adapted and changed to fit their community needs, and that's exactly what we did at Seawater Public Library. We were fortunate to only have to be closed completely for 29 days, and we've been in phased reopenings ever since based off of um, the active cases within the community. Uh, during the pandemic, we quickly uh, modified a number of our services. We introduced what's called a curbside checkout. You can place your orders either by phone, or you can go ahead and place holds online and then do a pickup in the parking lot. We have express walk-in computer access. We expanded the Wi-Fi services so it's available for free for quite a bit of space around in the parking lot area of the library. We have piloted a hotspot program and offered both online and in-house events for our summer reading program, which normally is an in-person thing in the month of June. We have expanded it to June and July in order to adapt to the pandemic. We now have what's called um, STEAM kits that can be checked out from the library for a lot of families that are doing homeschooling or to supplement what the schools are doing with their online program. Uh, we provided mask making workshops um, as well as many other programs that are available online by YouTube as well. So the numbers for the library this, this for the 2020, we ended up with 20,044 library visits. We provided 286 masks by way of the CARES grant. We had 1,073 people using computers, 1,263 that used the free Wi-Fi. Actual physical checkout of materials was 13,180. We had 7,795 who started using the Reads program, which provides, with your library card, you have access to free e-books, free audio books, free magazines, and there's even free movies on there. All it takes is a library card to, to access those services. 147 programs, workshops, and classes were offered, and we had 2,977 attend those online and in person. We had 318 service hours provided by community volunteers, which is equivalent of about $2,300 minimum wage value. A little bit lower numbers than what we normally do, but I'd say with the pandemic, not bad at all. We were fortunate to go ahead and add this year a seventh Little Free Library in the community and the Parks and Rec Department helped me rebuild two others. So even when we're closed or we have reduced services, there are always books and reading material available in our community. So we're very thankful for all the help from the community on that because I know the Quantas and I believe are filling those a lot of times. Any questions for me? 
Could you just tell them what the hotspot and the um, take-home steam kits included, just so they know in case they're approached by a parent that might have a need that they don't know about? We actually, the steam, it started off with the steam kits meant for the kids. It has a, it might have a game in it, several books in it. It might have things that help them with math. It might even have some uh, Legos or robotic stuff in the kit. And then we thought, well, there needs to be something for the adults, too. So we started offering an adult coloring kit. It has the adult coloring book in there, colored pencils, and the pencil sharpener as well. We're going to start offering one of the size kits so you can check them out and take them home. As part of the CARES grant, we were able to bring in three hotspots that actually can be checked out from the library, our one program. Unfortunately, the CARES Act did not cover the complete cost, and we would have to pay for part of that billing cycle, so we weren't able to do more than three of them. But they're in their testing um, phase right now, and they're out to some of the families right now being tested to see how well they work. So we'll see if, that, if that's something that the community feel like they need. We'll start working on grants to start paying for more of them. But we also expanded the Wi-Fi at the library, so you don't have to ride up against the building anymore. You can actually be out in the park lot and still have internet access. Okay. Thank you, Tanya. You're welcome. Good job. You do a good job. We want you to know that we're our libraries really good. We get Thank there you. with the help of all of all the commissioners and everybody within the city. That's how Thank, you. Thank you. Well, if anyone wants brochures, they're sitting up there. Just pass some along. We advertised for bids on a police vehicle. We got one bid. That was from Jack Jones. total there's two SUVs and an F-150 which is it matches our bid specs part of this y'all will remember we rolled money from last year that didn't get spent because we couldn't get the vehicle we wanted ordered last year so part of that is rolled from last year's budget still sitting in a reserve account the remainder of it was an insurance uh, recovery that we made where a vehicle was totaled last year and we were no longer able to use that vehicle so the insurance reimburses for a total amount of the vehicle so that truck was totaled down here on Little Ethel's Pike <laughs> Okay, so we are actually bidding three vehicles. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put it up for bid for the 
93-407-92. Do I hear a motion? The price for both all three. Three. The 93-407-92 is for the two SUVs, including the equipment. They didn't split out the equipment price. So that's, I want to say normally we pay between ten and 13000 on the equipment. Right. But it's 93-407-92 for both SUVs. And then the one Ford F-150 is... Forty-four thousand five thirteen thirty-nine, and that does include the equipment, the rifle mount, the cage inside of it for the police cage, all of that. So that's about one hundred forty thousand for three, right? Yeah, getting, yeah. So we are are we replacing three or just buying three no, right no, out? No, I mean, it's a lot of money. We're replacing three. See, we had with with COVID, the Ford Motor Company was shut down. And we had the money, this is money that we had left over from last year's budget that we moved into this budget to get. And then we had two that were totaled in car accidents where they were hit by people. And that's the two explorers and the truck was totaled down there on high street. Okay, did we get insurance money back yes, from that? Yes, and okay. we have that in the reserve. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, the first one is for two, 2021, with all the bells and whistles of 93-407-92. Do I hear a motion? I'll make the motion. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor, aye? Right? Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed, likewise. Motion carries. <clears throat> then we have another bid, which is a 2021 Ford, 27,169. Mm -hmm. Then I have one, it's a 2021 20, Ford F-150, 44,513.39. Your motion. I'll make the motion for the Ford F-150. Second. Any discussion? Aye. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, likewise. Motion carries. Now we own these, right? Yes. They are ours. I would like to say yeah. these vehicles, uh, especially they changed the body style this year. Uh, they they call it up. And, they, and it, we've been trying to get vehicles for about six months. And, and, and just for uh, clarification, what I understand is it seems like we come up with three vehicles to get. But it's not that way. We've been trying to get these for way before COVID started. And then when it started, the Ford place quit making them. And then, then they said, well, you know, the newer body style is out. We can't get the old one. And, uh, and that's where it comes from. Like, like I said, the two explorers were involved in wrecks. And the, uh, the truck was involved in the wreck. I mean. Okay, thank you, Eddie. We discussed the past several meetings of a what we call a part-time employee litter control person which we advertise we received one application and move forward with pre-employment screening and commissioner hughes do you have a motion to hire i made a motion we are Andy gordon for this part-time litter control person and your board do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Likewise. Motion carries. Commissioner Richardson, I think you have a motion to fill a, fill a uh, vacancy in the fire department. I do. Uh, I make a motion that we promote Derek Ingram uh, into a full time vacancy that we have at the fire department. Is that a form of motion? Yes, sir. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor, aye. Aye. Those likewise, motion does carry. Now we have a budget amendment to review, which includes COVID grant funding and expenditures 
and the new litter control budget, we're going to have to amend this budget. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Are there any discussion? Motion does carry. So we amend an ordinance. Mm -hmm. Got a police department appointment. Okay, roll call vote on the uh, amendment of the budget. Commissioner Richardson? Aye. Commissioner Hughes? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Mosier? Aye. Commissioner Stockton? Aye. Okay, motion to <coughs> Now, Bill, you have a. Yes, we have a officer that is transitioning to retire. And we have an officer that we trained here, got him started out here, and he left. And he wants to come back, and we're going to put him. We can put him on the road now because he's got stuff to go to work. That's uh, Jaron Turpinant. We had him before. Uh, we're bringing him back. And uh, Suzanne Ward will be tra transitioning out of the fire police department. Uh, we don't know exactly what day she's got time built up. She's using that, but we need Jaron. We're going to let Jaron take her place. Jaron Turpin. I'll make a motion for it. Second. Motion made. Second. Any more discussion? If not, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, likewise. Motion does carry. Okay, we have a rezoning ordinance for the property where Red Stag Fulfillment Center is proposed to be located. Jordan Mullenhauer is here to answer any question that we might have tonight. This was a recommendation unanimously uh, passed by the Planning Commission. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion for adoption of ordinance 988 to rezone the parcels. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye? Aye. Opposed, oh, likewise. Motion does carry. George is here if. Uh, roll call, please, on that one. Commissioner Richardson? Aye. Commissioner Hughes? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Moser? Aye. Commissioner Stockton? Aye. Okay. George, you got anything you want? Say, I know we had a meeting last week, and it was a really good meeting. Had a, a full house here, and he was on Zoom, I think. So, um, yeah, I just want to say thanks again for how hospitable and helpful this meeting has been. It has been uh, incredible to work with um, different members of the city. Um, I mentioned a few uh, on a Zoom call this last week, um, but the mayor, uh, Jessica, uh, Eric Hicks at, at uh, the Sweetwater and Village Board, and also Chuck here has been just incredibly helpful. Uh, it's a complex project. There are thousands and thousands of details that our team is organizing. Um, we have uh, some excellent engineers and, and advisors. Uh, these are two of my crack shot consultants <laughs> <laughs> um, who are helping us on the project. And, uh, it's, it's going very well. Um, there's a lot of details to manage, but uh, uh, it's going very well, and, and largely in part to just the help uh, that we've received from the community and getting questions answered, and being able to sit down and work through engineering questions with utilities teams and uh, boundary and roads questions with uh, Chuck and his team and so forth. So we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Finally, we have the capital improvement plan. The changes requested in the workshop has been incorporated into the draft. I'll open the floor for discussion now. We will uh, put this up again in the February workshop. Is there anything that needs to be added to the capital improvement at this time? From any of the commissioners? I would also encourage that you, uh, if you do, talk to Jessica so that we'll be starting on the budget here very shortly and we can infiltrate all of this in. And so, we have recommended mention the workshop. We would like a date of March the 
around March the 17th at 11 o'clock to have a working workshop. Does anybody disagree with that or can't make it as far as you know? It's March 17th. That'll be all right. Wednesday. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. On the State Street agent on your equipment line mm -hmm. for the year 2022, mm -hmm. that will be the budget we're working on. Yes. And that's uh, we already have $250,000 for equipment in that. Well, you told me you needed a dump truck. So I put two hundred and fifty thousand in there. Now I have no idea what the dump truck costs, <laughs> and I put it in two years in a row instead of buying them both in the same year. So if I need to move that around, tell me. Well, you're talking about the dump truck and also about the uh, the mower. Okay. Yeah. We start so, working on the budget. Do you think those numbers are good though for this capital improvement? So. Okay. What year is my plumbing for the project? So the pool improvements are not for this coming year, starting July 1st, but the following year. Okay, and that's because that's when that grant cycle loads up again is in that year. Anything else? I just mean to, um, I know we sometimes talk about how good we have it. <clears throat> here at the city and the wonderful set of employees that we had, but I met with a gentleman just uh, last week that is investing in our community and opening a business. And the story he told is he left another state headed to Tennessee and he was making six stops and he was gonna purchase property to start this business before he went back home. And he told me specifically that Jessica Morgan and Chuck Whited is the reason that he purchased property in Sweetwater and is opening this business based on the help that he got from them. And I, like I say, I can't not say enough about um, Sweetwater and opening up to other people. I've, I've heard several times from folks, a lot of times Sweetwater, um, other towns, talk about doing things, but Sweetwater actually acts on it. And it's because of these two individuals that this business is, is here today. So I just wanted to, to share that news with this board. That speaks extremely highly of these two individuals. Don't get your hopes up for Ray. <laughs> <laughs> I do the budget, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> Sunny and Sweetwater. <laughs> we appreciate everything they do, that's for sure. Uh, so that'll be from about 11 to 2 uh, on that workshop, and we will have lunch provided. Will it last that long? I don't know. It depends on... Depends on how much a dump truck costs. <laughs> I just put that down. If you would book that out in your calendar and let me know if that date doesn't work, we can talk about a different date in the February workshop. We've never had a city council meeting last that long, have we? I think our budget workshop last year was two and a half hours, though. Two, two hours, two and a half hours. Yeah, and it was lunch, so that's four <laughs> Okay. Two. Finally, we have a grant announcement that we uh, got. It was posted Friday. What it is is a grant from the National Endowment for the Arts through the Tennessee Arts Commission. It is a grant that will put a mural on our wall down here. And. Uh, I don't know the grant itself, those, those murals are pretty high, mm -hmm. I will say that. And so I guess it'll be a picture of Chuck and Jessica down there. <laughs> 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 but, but the 
only thing I know it could be. I make a motion we approve. <laughs> nice letter from uh, the grant people that said this. The moment we received the application from Sweetwater, we were all giddy. Is that the same thing as tickled? <laughs> For a few reasons. Much as its name suggests, it's a sweet town of about 6,000 residents with a thriving Main Street program. The downtown business owners of whom are majority females, and this is going to be, be built around females. Kind of, it's kind of like women taking the lead, which hell we all know that. <laughs> but it, that's kind of what it's built around so that we get this grant of recognition of women. Is it for what Harry T. Burns is kind of like that? Yeah, it was commemorating women's suffrage being 100 years this past year. Yeah, and Harry, Harry T. Burns is part of Sweetwater. He had a law office here for years. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, didn't he cast the deciding vote for women to vote? He changed his vote because his mother wrote him a letter and oh. <laughs> said, son. <laughs> so he changed his vote. But it's built around that, recognizing our women for what they do and how important they are to us as a community and uh, as a nation, really. But anyway, it is presented for public view. We'll have to pick out exactly what kind of mural uh, that we'll get up there. And if Jessica and Chuck comes up, we'll vote on it. <laughs> You're going to have sure. to wear a dress. Everybody's, everybody's satisfied with it. But anyway, they are happy with the partner. There's two of them in the state of Tennessee. It got it. We were one of them. And it's going to make that wall down there uh, look so much better. And it's going to enhance the whole downtown area. So um, thank you, Jessica. I think you was the one that found that. And right, Dave Jones sent it to us. Yeah. yeah, Dave Jones sent it to us. And we thank you for that. Good job, as always. And we'll have more on this probably next meeting then. And next meeting night, I will be uh, giving out the 2020 Citizen of the Year Award. There will be two of those that I have given out since 2010, and this will make the 12th one that we have give out. And so it's going to be somebody special that we all know. So that will be the next meeting night. March, March. Okay, anything else coming before the board? All minds clear? Thank you for being here. We are adjourned.